Καλημέρα σας και από μένα. Σας καλωσορίζω στην πρώτη ενότητα του τουρισμού. Και χαίρομαι πολύ για την επόμενη μισή ώρα θα μιλήσουμε για τον τουρισμό πέρα από την εφορία των αριθμών. Θα εμβαθύνουμε σε άλλες πτυχές αυτού του αναπτυξιακού τομέα και θα εστιάσουμε στην βιώσιμη ανάπτυξη. Μία λέξη που, την, που κοσμεί το λεξιλόγιο μας αρκετά, από, αρκετά συχνά τα τελευταία χρόνια. Το ερώτημα είναι πόσο έχει εντυπωθεί στη συνείδησή μας. I will now switch to English and introduce our guest speakers. Uh, Mr. Alain Dupera, Head of the Regional Development Division of OECD, and Mr. Yanis Retos, President of the Greek Tourism Confederation. Our discussion topic today <coughs> is Tourism Policy for Sustainable Growth. The most common definition of sustainable development was provided in 1987 by uh, the World Commission on Environment and Development in the Our Common Future Report, well known as the Broodland Report. It defines it as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations <coughs> to meet their own needs. Sustainability is a process aimed at achieving environmental, economic and social improvement, both locally and globally, or a state that can be maintained and at a certain level indefinitely. So, uh, Mr. Dupera, I will start uh, with you addressing my first question. Are <coughs> tourism and uh, sustainability growing at the same pace? Thank you very much. Good morning, all. Uh, I, I think in tourism, we have been, we are recognizing for sure at the OECD that sustainability is uh, at the center of tourism competitiveness. And so uh, the challenge is definitely to align, as you said, the growth of tourism, which has been, as you said, very important over the past decades, uh, with uh, sustainability. It's, it's a main challenge because tourism is using many public, uh, natural, and cultural resources. And uh, to make sure that tourism is sustainable, it means that governments, in particular, together with the private sector, they have to think long term uh, and to develop very active tourism strategy. So living tourism on its own, it's not an option. Governments, as it was very precisely uh, articulated by the minister, uh, has to be also driven by a strong national, regional, and local tourism policy. I think we still have progress to make here, uh, which I think is partly responding to your question. In some places, we have seen too much tourism, for example, which has been also uh, affected the sustainability of a destination. So it's, everything is about management, developing a better multi-level governance, working closer with the private sector, I think now it's highly recognized within governments that without close working with the private sector, we will not be able to achieve the level of sustainability and inclusiveness that we would like to achieve through tourism uh, economy. So I think we still have many progress to do, but I think we are on the right, uh, we are going in the right direction. Okay, thank you. Uh, Moving to the Greek environment, uh, Mr. Retos, uh, which, uh, which of the following face the greater sustainability challenges, destinations, enterprises, or the tourism product itself? Well, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. Very happy to participate in this, in this forum. Uh, I would say that uh, product, uh, enterprises, and destinations are interrelated and interconnected. Uh, product can be negatively or, negatively or positively affected by destinations management or by enterprises operation. And uh, we should always remember that uh, in Greece we ran through a major crisis over these last nine years, uh, which mean, means that uh, we face a lot of problems in terms of infrastructure, in terms of investments in our destinations and also in our enterprises. So this, one could expect that uh, would affect our product negatively. On the other hand, we saw a very big increase in tourism this last, uh, I would say, six years since uh, uh, 2013. Uh, what happened 
even though we face these problems and even though we have today uh, destinations that run over their capacity, is that we managed to create synergies. We understood that uh, the main task is uh, to manage uh, our destinations, uh, change somehow our mentality, try to use our natural resources in a, in a best possible way to satisfy, first of all, the habitants of the destinations in order to have a happy clients. So uh, uh, even though someone would expect that uh, during this crisis we would see destinations deteriorating and we would see tourists being unhappy, uh, we are in the process of trying to reverse that and uh, try to enhance the product, uh, enrich the product, manage our destinations better in order to make uh, this, uh, this tourist growth sustainable. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dupera, uh, what are the emerging challenges and megatrends and how do we address them? I think we have many, we have many challenges if we think uh, long term and, and, and tourism. But uh, many of these challenges, we can also see them as big opportunities for uh, tourism. So uh, at the OECD, over the past two or three years, we have been doing major uh, work on, on, to analyze some of the megatrends which will affect uh, tourism. And, 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 and this is very important to position our countries at best uh, up to 2040. So for example, if you uh, look at uh, demographic trends, yesterday there was a, a panel, I think, touching on senior tourism and the opportunity of senior tourism for, uh, for tourism in the long term and for a country like Greece in particular. Here, it means we have to change a number of uh, practices and <coughs> operations uh, in, uh, in, in each destination. So there is a need to adjust uh, the tourism uh, economy and the way the tourism businesses are functioning to this, uh, to this challenge, but which is also an opportunity. We can think about the same about the tremendous growth of uh, uh, middle age uh, uh, class uh, that we see everywhere, especially in Asia, which also require adjustment to the industry. We are also looking, for example, at mobility issues, uh, and uh, we have been speaking a lot about the continuing growth of tourism. This in itself is, uh, is, is a main challenge for all countries on how to accommodate this growing number of people coming to your country, of course at the border, but also within the destination, and here, you can immediately link with another long-term challenge, which is linked to the sustainability issue. And for example, uh, if you think uh, mobility and transport, which is a main uh, emissions uh, dimension of tourism, you have to think about mobility within the final destination. Active mobility uh, patterns, for example, are now being developed in many uh, key Mediterranean destinations to smooth a little bit this. But we can think about also about, for example, in terms of sustainability, about food production. <coughs> so we have more than a billion tourists international traveling in the world. Uh, we know that uh, there is also a number of, uh, I mean, all of these tourists, of course, they are eating, they are going to restaurants, you know, they are going to hotels. So how can we do better to manage food production in the uh, hotel and restaurant sector in particular? And here, for example, I think we are still at the very beginning. We haven't done much, for example, in terms of circular economy in uh, the tourism sector. So there are plenty of challenges like that. We could think also about security, which is a growing uh, <clears throat> challenge in, uh, in, in, in many, in many uh, countries. So we have been looking at some of these megatrends like this to see, <coughs> sorry, what does it mean for governments? Governments need to think long-term, need to think strategy. They need to do some uh, foresight scenario, I would call them, you know, and, and in tourism, we are not so 
uh, well trained to do this because I mean we are used to have ev more tourists every year, you know, but not it's not sufficient. You need to be a bit more innovative. You need to be prepared for the long term future, and so governments have to be a bit more agile, a bit more innovative, and a bit more uh, forward looking. And to do this, they need to uh, discuss not only within the various levels of government, but also with the private sector, and we need to work with the whole tourism industry, which is also a challenge in itself. Mm -hmm. Switching to the private sector, Mr. Retos, how does the private sector engage uh, with market demand, the, the enabling technologies and the environment? First of all, demand. This is the, the biggest issue. Uh, what we are trying to do as private sector, uh, actually, uh, six years ago, we created a, a private company, a non-profit company, Marketing Greece, uh, which cooperates closely with the government in order to, to enable the formulation of the product and also promote uh, different destinations uh, and the country as a whole. So this is a, an ongoing process. Actually, last week uh, we had a big presentation of a digital campaign for 2009, uh, which uh, was adopted by the Ministry of, uh, of Tourism and uh, actually was given to the Ministry of Tourism in order to, for the Ministry now, to use the international means and use it as a promotion of our country uh, throughout uh, 2019 and onwards, of course. Now, technology is a very big issue that applies both in, uh, in, uh, in companies, but also for the clients. Uh, in terms of enterprises, uh, adapting new technologies can make their operation more efficient and more effective. On the other, tire, on the other, uh, on the other hand, by adopting uh, new technologies, you can make the product better and you can make customer experience better. And I can give you an example especially in culture, in archaeological sites, when you have the ability to buy electronically your ticket, or you have the ability to be electronically allocated in a certain time period throughout the day to visit a certain site and avoid congestion, or being at a certain site in a cultural uh, uh, site and uh, have an app that, uh, uh, depending on who you are and what is your age, can describe you in a different way what you're looking at. So, all these are really crucial and, uh, and important in order to, uh, to, to, to maximize uh, uh, customer experience. And uh, what we did uh, in, September, in October, actually, we had our, uh, our annual uh, uh, convention, which was dedicated in technology. Uh, we called it something different. And we tried to show uh, new applications, new, new trends in tourism, and actually, uh, different technological approaches that can be adopted both from companies uh, but also from, uh, from the public sector. Uh, now, uh, in terms of uh, sustainability, we have many different, different studies lately uh, which show very, different, uh, very, very important and interesting things. There is a Nielsen study uh, showing that uh, in, in 60 different countries, showing that uh, two out of three people are willing to pay more for environmental friendly products. Also, there are other studies that show that uh, millennials and Generation Z uh, people uh, are looking for products, uh, from, for original project, products from the local community, and they're also willing to pay for that. So uh, this uh, gives us, it, it's, a, it's actually a push for us and uh, uh, makes us trying to find ways to enrich our product. Uh, interface it with culture, with gastronomy, try to use local resources more than we used to do. Uh, try to make uh, 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 local producers participate in the creation of the product and the creation of the experience. Mm -hmm. So I think that all this, uh, uh, along with a change of mentality, which is uh, number one you should do, change of the, of the mentality of the local people, uh, enables us to create a better product and a more sustainable product, and also being able to, to attract higher income uh, tourists in our country. Thank you, Mr. Uh, we heard about change in the mentality. You spoke about innovation. Uh, there, there's a, a need of 
change in culture in order to uh, move uh, sustainably and to reach in inclusive growth. What is the role of government destinations and the private, private sector in this process, Mr. Dutera? I mean, the role of government, as I said, is, 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 is instrumental in uh, ensuring a long-term, sustainable, <coughs> inclusive, but also a strong uh, economic growth of, of tourism. I think what is important to understand when we come from tourism is that tourism administration only, or Ministry of Tourism only, will not be sufficient to achieve all of these uh, objectives. So uh, a, a tourism ministry has to work very closely with all of the other arms of the government at national, regional, and local level. Easy to say, difficult to uh, manage. So in other words, I think we have to uh, integrate that tourism requires a complex multi-level governance system, uh, which is public-public, but also public-private. So this is very important. And here, then, uh, we have to strengthen, on a continuous basis, uh, the tourism administration to make it well-equipped to discuss with, for example, uh, innovation people or with uh, economy uh, and uh, development. You were mentioning, uh, for example, the fact that tourism is not, on, is not sufficiently receiving funding for uh, its development, for example, through the EU programs and different things. I'm now also covering, for example, at the OECD, regional development, and I can see, of course, the main difference, you know. So I think here uh, we still have to demonstrate that the tourism economy is a very serious economic business, uh, has the potential to create jobs, to create local development, to uh, create jobs at the local level, so to be more inclusive, has also all the potential because all of the small businesses. Uh, and so tourism can bring many things to an economy that, for example, the financial sector cannot bring. So this is, in, in other words, much complementary to uh, other sectors. We have to work on difficult issues also, like uh, how can we increase the productivity of the tourism sector? Because at the end of the day, if we want to increase the added value of a tourism product, we have to uh, ensure that uh, skills in tourism will be also you know, enhanced and developed. Um, and of course, uh, if you have better uh, skilled people in tourism, working in tourism, they will also um, look for uh, higher salaries, high, better working conditions. So we have to work on all of these dimensions at the same time. And here, of course, government can help, but the private sector is everything, because at the end of the day, uh, tourism is driven by the private sector. So we have to work very closely with the private sector on these issues to ensure that we are progressively um, you know, increasing uh, the capacity and the added value of, of the tourism uh, economy in the economy. Innovation is everywhere, and innovation requires tourism ministries to work with innovation agencies, with uh, other type of departments, to make sure that this innovation that makes sense can be also embedded in uh, tourism uh, development. You were speaking about the digital economy. We know uh, how uh, important will be uh, to succeed in the digital transformation of tourism SMEs. Uh, and this is a big challenge given the very small businesses that we have in the sector. Of course, it's not uh, so much of a challenge for the big champions of the tourism economy, but the small one it is. So how can we accompany this? How can we uh, uh, develop further digital skills uh, in tourism? Uh, which is also very highly demanded. How can we adjust, you know, the training and education, um, but also on the job training to make sure that this is uh, this is working properly? So all of all of this, this is the way a, a, a modern government has to work mm -hmm. on tourism, not in isolation, but in close cooperation with all the other arms of the government, but also with the, with the regions. Uh, and, 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 and this is important in all countries. In some countries, <coughs> regions have 
the responsibility of tourism. In some other countries, it's not the case, but in all cases, you have to make sure that uh, both uh, policies at regional level and at national level are closely aligned to succeed. Thank you. We heard about the added value of tourism. You spoke earlier about infrastructure. What actions can be taken uh, in order to improve the impact of tourism in regions, cities, local communities, Mr. Retsos? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I, I want to say that uh, to deal with the sustainability issue and uh, actually uh, make situation better, an easy answer would be to distribute our 30 million guests in, in more places or uh, maybe enlarge the season. But the, the, the actual fact is that we have uh, many destinations and uh, we target certain markets and we have certain pro products that uh, will make these destinations operate over capacity for four or five months forever. You cannot do anything about that. So how you're going to face this, this problem that uh, becomes uh, bigger and bigger every year? I think what needs to be done, uh, first of all, is uh, investments. Investments, as you said, in infrastructure in federal level, but also in local level. Local level is more important. Uh, we have elections actually in May for our uh, new mayors and new uh, uh, in our regions and uh, what we say in, uh, in our members and to everybody is to, to pressure the, uh, everybody who participate in these elections to be committed on what they're going to do in terms of tourism and in terms of improving their infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So one th thing is infrastructure, but I think most important than infrastructure is the change of of beliefs, of mentalities, and of stereotypes. If we, people, I mean, uh, people who live in this country are not ready to change our mentality and our stereotypes, no matter how much money the government or the, or, uh, the region or the local community is willing to invest, there is not going to be a change. And I can give you many examples. Uh, as I told you, we have uh, many destinations now in our country that uh, operate over their capacity. We saw Corfu last year with the garbage disposal. It's a problem that still remains unsolved, and we have the local community that fights against the problem. We have the local community that does not want to accept know-how and money from the European Union to create modern plants and actually ask the government even today to pay for the removal of the garbage from Corfu to another place in Epirus. So if uh, we don't manage to change these stereotypes and our mentality, I think no matter how much money the government or the local community is willing to invest, there's not going to be change. Thank you, Mr. Retos. We still have a few minutes. Uh, therefore, I would like to ask from both of you a short closing remark. Mr. Dugara, starting with you. Uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, tourism, uh, I mean, now tourism has demonstrated uh, the, uh, the, the role it can play, the multiple roles it can play in the economy. We have to uh, pursue in this direction, uh, in particular, to work on the sustainability and the inclusiveness dimension of, of, of tourism. Uh, and, to, and to work in particular uh, with uh, small and micro businesses and as well as with the local communities who are playing a very important role for the long-term uh, sustainability of the sector. So I think this is key. Uh, and I think this is uh, uh, in, in the same spirit as uh, what... Uh, the speaker, the other speaker was saying, uh, we have to change a little bit sometimes the mentality uh, at the local level to make sure that uh, you know tourism is well received and can contribute to uh, to a long-term development, uh, sustainable and inclusive. Thank you, Mr. Dupera. Mr. Letzos. Uh, I would like to say that uh, in order to to formulate a strategy for the future and. Uh, uh, retain uh, this growth and uh, this power we earned over these last years as, a, as a, one of the main global tourist destinations, we should focus on uh, destination management. Uh, nowadays, destination management is equally important as destination promotion. Uh, we should take examples from abroad. We have many examples. In our conference, we brought the example of Amsterdam, the example of uh, Copenhagen, 
uh, they showcase that they show showcase us uh, how uh, they have the private sector, the federal government, the local community work in synergies, and how they manage to manage their destination in the way that uh, they have uh, happy habitants. Having happy, happy habitants, happy, happy citizens, uh, means that uh, you're going to have uh, happy tourists. So I think we should focus on that, and we should build our strategy around that. Thank you very much. We have reached closing time. So changing culture, innovation, infrastructure, sustainability in order to reach inclusive growth. I would like to thank very much Mr. Dupera, head of the Regional Development and Tourism Division of the OECD, and Mr. Yanis Rezos, President of the Greek Tourism Confederation. And thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much.